Paul Mur Deputy Paul Murphy sharing with Deputy Brees. Karen Corla. Um, I, I think the situation and what's been revealed in the last uh, week or so is utterly scandalous. Um, I think it demonstrates deeply double standards between how ordinary people would be treated if they attempted to get someone else to go and vote for them and how TDs, TDs feel that they can act. And I think it demonstrates a contempt for democracy uh, in the Fianna Fáil side of the House, but we also see it in other respects in the government side of the House, for example, in the abuse of money messages. I want to thank the Ken Corla and the Clerk for the, the comprehensive and speedy report. And now I want to focus on some details. Um, and perhaps Deputy Collins and Dooley could answer some of the questions that I'm going to pose when they make their personal statements later. Um, bluntly, I don't buy the stories that Deputy Collins and Deputy Dooley give. Their story is, to summarise, that Deputy Dooley didn't realise Deputy Collins was voting for him any time until he's contacted the following day. And Deputy Collins's story is that he thinks Deputy Dooley is up at the back uh, on a phone call and therefore he, he votes for him. But th there's a real problem with that story from the evidence that is given to the, the review, in particular from Deputy Collins. And it relates to the question that there was eight votes on that day and Deputy Collins only voted for Deputy Dooley on six of those eight votes. And Deputy Collins maintains that he thinks throughout the entire time of the eight votes Deputy Dooley was up there he maintains that he felt they had a kind of informal, ongoing relationship whereby Deputy Dooley, Dooley being up there would mean that Deputy Collins would vote for him. But he cannot explain why he votes for the first six and then he doesn't vote in the last two. He's asked about it by Melissa English, who says, if you thought that Deputy Dooley was there and you didn't look around, why stop? Deputy Collins says, I can't give an explanation. It is an obvious question, but I can't give an explanation. Something important happens in between the sixth vote and the seventh vote, it seems, where Peter Finnegan asks, at one stage, and it seems at this stage, you took a quick 10-second phone call in the chamber. Can you recall who it was? Deputy Collins says no. He doesn't offer to check his phone, as Deputy Dooley does when he is being interviewed about, uh, and questioned about a separate matter. I, I think the fact that he votes six times, he claims to think that Deputy Dooley is still in the chamber, he gets a phone call and he stops. I think that has significance. I think Deputy Collins needs to tell us if that phone call was from Deputy Dooley, if that phone call was about his voting, and he needs to provide an explanation about why he didn't vote on vote seven and vote eight. The second point I want to raise is that the five voting seats that are involved in this question, are A14, 15, 16, 17 and 18, they're the first five seats there. Um, the question I want to ask is, is it, is it a coincidence that they're the seats on the very front bench? Or is it related to the fact that the cameras only pick people up on the first two benches? And so if someone on the third bench, fourth bench or fifth bench was to be engaged in this practice, it would not be picked up by the camera, we wouldn't have vote gate and none of us would be any the wiser. And so the question is, are, are there deputies in Fianna Fáil on the later benches who have engaged in this practice and he just haven't got caught. Is this a widespread off-camera practice um, and it's just those that happen to be on camera who are getting caught? And the third question I want to raise is, many members of the public have asked, what's the benefit for Deputy Dooley in, in this situation? Why would you possibly get someone to vote for you? Um, and what people often say is, well, is it so they can get the, the allowances? So they can get their 120 days for their travel and accommodation and allowance? And, and the answer is that that wouldn't be a rationale to, to do that. I think the rationale would be to, in, to be seen to be voting on the issues. You can't be you know, accused of having a low voting record. And if someone asks, how did you vote? You're able to say how you voted. But, but the question about expenses and the question about the 120 days begs another question, in my opinion, which is that we, we all know that there's a system for fobbing in here for 120 days a year in order to get your full allowance that is not subject to any camera check and that is even more open to abuse than the voting system. Where is it the case that TDs are getting other people to fob in for themselves at these, these systems in order to get up to the 120 days? Because if TDs are willing or able to get other TDs to vote for them when they're not in the chamber, well then why on earth wouldn't they be having someone fob in for them to be able to clock up for their expenses. Thank you. Deputy Smith.